Good afternoon. I'm Ed Pozzuoli, CEO of Trip Scott, and today we're honored to have Steve Moore. Uh, Steve is a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and advisor to President Trump, and frankly, uh, the architect of some of the key points in the Trump tax bill that's driving this economy. Steve, welcome. Good to see you again, Ed. Good seeing Thanks you. Thanks for inviting me back to Fort Lauderdale. Uh, uh, we appreciate yeah. the opportunity to speak. So, right to it, uh, economy. No um, recession. No recession. No recession. Let me get that right out at the start. I mean, I. Every time I pick up the newspapers and for the last three months, it's a recession right around the corner or we're going over a cliff. I think that's wishful thinking of a lot of um, liberals who don't want Trump to be reelected. Um, and, you know, the more they say that, we get more and more good economic news. I mean, the last jobs report we got was very solid. Right. You know, we uh, continue to break uh, records in terms of low unemployment rate. I mean, think about this, Ed. You know, you and I are getting a little long in the tooth. We've been around for a while. We have the lowest unemployment rate today in 50 years, the lowest interest rates in 50 years, the lowest inflation rate in 50 years, the highest wage gains in about 25 years. Um, that's a pretty darn good economy, you it's, know. I mean, it's what a are real good economy. About? It's, it's a great economy, but but we've heard from the left mostly that says this is an economy that's only benefiting the top one percent. That that just doesn't bear out. Does so it? I'm going to answer that, but let me just say one thing that does concern me about the economy. I'm a little sure. worried about the industrial manufacturing okay. sector. So that's weakened, and we lost actually jobs in that in that sector last month. I mean, it's pretty been pretty good for the last two and a half years, but it's it's slowing down. So that does concern me, and I think that's a result of this uncertainty about the trade war. Right. And so you know, I think if Trump can get this thing signed, sealed, and delivered. I think you're going to see a booming stock market and economy now. But with the Chinese, it's always two steps forward and one step it back. It really is. It's so frustrating. I, mean, I, t I talk to our trade negotiators all the time. I was just in the White House with President Trump last week, and he was just expressing great frustration with the Chinese, that it's really difficult to get them pinned down and to get them to honor their word. But, so, uh, but, but let me ask you something about the Chinese. Let's take, because we'll jump to the wage issue yeah. in a second. On the Chinese issue, they seem to be playing a longer game <laughs> than we play normally. And well, they can. They don't have to have elections. Well, there's no elections, we do, right? You know? Right. I mean, it's a it's an advantage for President Xi. He's sort of president for life, and they know we've got an election a year from now, so they're using that as a bit of leverage over Trump. Um, but their economy can't stand up to it. Yeah, you know, you wouldn't think so. I mean, it's really these tariffs have really hurt their economy. They they could be headed to their first recession at in 30 years. You know, they've been soaring, and all of a sudden, so. And by the way, you never see that covered in the American media. They always say how the tariffs are hurting us, and they have hurt us. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's caused a bit of a slowdown, but for the Chinese, it's been tough. I mean, Trump used to say to me, you know, if we can't trade with China, we sneeze. If they can't trade with us, they catch pneumonia. And so uh, I, I'm very hopeful we get this deal done. Now, I do want to address that issue you brought up about the middle class, because you're right. I wa I've watched a lot of the Democratic debates. I've listened to what they're saying on the media. You know, the, the same people who said, remember this, if Donald Trump is elected president, we're going to have a Great Depression. He's going to destroy the economy. Well, now we have a really solid economy, right. so they're trying to, you know, so their next thing was, well, the recession's right around the corner. It sure doesn't look like that. Um, and now what they're saying, oh, it's only the rich people, only the Warren Buffetts and the LeBron James and the Bill Gates are, are benefiting from this. I just had a piece in the Wall Street Journal last week where I actually looked at the actual Census Bureau data. Not This isn't Heritage data. It's not Steve Moore's data. It comes right from the Census Bureau. Um, and they do a monthly survey of what's happening with incomes, the same um, index that they use to generate the unemployment rate number. Right. What I found, I'm glad you're sitting down because this number is unbelievable. Since January of 2017, when Donald Trump came into office, through August of 2019, Median middle class incomes for households are up $5,003. That's gigantic. That's right. a huge number. I mean, under Obama, in eight years, incomes only went up $1,100. So in two and a half years, to see that kind of gain, th this undermines everything the Democrats are saying, only the rich are better. And by the way, we know this is true because look at how people are spending money. You right. know, consumers are spending, you go to a movie theater, you go to a, uh, you know, a, I flew over here today from Washington. Every seat is filled with families and grandparents and, and people are flying. You see the, the record sales for Lowe's and Home Depot and a lot of our... Great indicators just, on that, yeah. Yeah, well, why are people spending? Because they have more money in their wallet. They have a bigger paycheck. And that was by design, Ed. We, we wanted to create a tight labor market because Trump cares about blue-collar, middle-class workers. And he wanted to make sure that they could get a wage gain, and we're, we're seeing that. So I, don't, I just don't think that's going to hold up. Tight labor market equals 
greater wages. Bingo. Bingo. And that was absolutely by design. It's, it's a simple law of supply and demand, right? This isn't complicated stuff. I mean, you know this, you run an important firm. If you have to hire workers, but they can go down the street and go somewhere else, you got to offer more. Wages, and that's what's happening in the American economy. It's a great story, you know, and it's, it shows that the tax cuts, the deregulation, I'm proud of the fact that, uh, you know, well, Trump talks about this all the time. For the first time, and again, you're in my lifetime, the United States is exporter of oil and gas. It's amazing. Rather than importer. It's amazing. Did you ever think that would happen? No, in your not, not not going through the you know when yeah. when gasoline hit a dollar for crying out loud. It was it was it was in line. And by the way, you know we else. had the uh, remember was a t about a few weeks ago we had the uh, the uh, Iranians bombing the uh, Saudi oil field. And even with that, it was a blip. Yeah. It, it, if if we hadn't had the huge shale oil and gas revolution in this country. The price of gasoline would have gone to six dollars a gallon, and incidentally, I'm listening to what Elizabeth Warren is saying. I'm listening to what you know Bernie Sanders is saying, Kamala Harris. Say. They want to get rid of the shale oil and gas production in America. I mean, that, that would put millions of people out of work. It would drive your you know your uh, price you pay at the gas pump to four or five dollars a gallon, and it would make us dependent on Russia and OPEC and the Saudis and other countries for our energy. I mean, that just doesn't make any sense to me. But with all the other noise out there, yeah. You know, impeachment, you know, Ukraine, whatever it is, can we get that message out that the economy is booming and the things that some of the left is proposing will totally we better <laughs> we better get it out. Right? I mean, that's what I'm doing at every single day. You know, that's why I'm here. That's why I go all over the country. I go everywhere from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine. And, uh, you know, look, people get it, though. You can't spin this, you know, to people, you know, else, oh, people aren't doing better. They know they're doing better. They know they have a bigger paycheck. They know they have more money in their wallet. They know they love these. You know, where I live um, in Northern Virginia is probably the same here in Florida. You can get a 30-year mortgage, 3.4% yeah, interest rate. Right. I mean, would you ever thought we'd right. see that? So it's, it's a strong economy. It could be better. It always could be better. We want to see that growth rate come up. And I think the one dark cloud on the horizon, that's the only thing that really worries me, well, two things, actually. One is the trade war. Can we get that resolved? And the second is, it would just be horrible for our country if you had someone who was anti-business like Elizabeth Warren. You know, I, it pains me to say this, but I just think the Democratic Party, you know, when I came to Washington, there were people like, you know, Bill Clinton and Bill Bradley and Dick Kephart that were true centrist kind of pro-business Democrats. I'm not hearing a pro-business prosperity message from the Democrats. It's all raise taxes, soak the rich, redistribute income, tax people more. Grow that's the, not, grow the government. Grow the right, right. Yeah. So if people think that that's coming, I mean, do you want to invest in that kind of environment? I don't know if you can. Yeah. I mean, what's there to invest in if the government controls exactly. medicine? I mean, you know, in the healthcare. I mean, I saw the other day, uh, you know, one of the uh, C, uh, executives at the New York Stock Exchange said, you know, the day after Elizabeth Warren is elected president is the, is the day we shut down the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, that's how hostile she is to wealth creation and business owners and entrepreneurs. And look, you know, it's my old boss, Dick Army, remember from Texas, yeah. used to say, you know, liberals love jobs, but they hate employers. You can't have jobs without employers. Right. 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 So, you know, we need a, this is one thing. Look, there's a lot of things about Donald Trump that he does and says I don't like. But what, one thing I really do like about this president, I think the American public appreciate, he's pro-business. He's a businessman. He knows how to, how to meet a payroll. He knows how to, uh, you know, create growth. And, and we've got that right now. And, and prosperity is a tough thing to vote against. And, and we know that it means uh, money in everybody's pocket. You got it. On that note, Steve, thank you so much. Steve. I appreciate thank it. Thank you.